So I'm gonna use Command Zero to go back to the default workspace. And what I'm gonna do is create a new project using Command N. I'm gonna call it my completed overtime film. Hit return to create that project. And I'll switch over to the list view with all my clips here. Look for duration, because I know the completed project uh, should be in here. It's sorted based on the scene number. I'm going to change that sort by um, or group by. I'm going to change that to none because then that will show me everything. And here I can see a, an, a completed cut of this film. I'm going to drag this onto the timeline, hit Shift Z. And now we're going to look at this and, and just pretend that we've edited this entire film, right? And so at the end, I have the closing credits uh, happening. And while the credits are going, I'm deciding maybe I want just the entire film to be fast forwarding by. I want it to be really quickly flying by as an overlay while these credits are happening. So to create that effect, I'm going to hold Option, drag this clip up to make a copy of it. And then I'm going to go into this little button, which is our speed adjustments. And there's all kinds of speed changes you can use here. There's some actual effects like speed ramp, instant replay that you can work with. But in this case, I want it to be fast forwarding, let's say 20 times. Let's try 20x and see how fast that goes. So here it is. I'm going to drag it over to the end. Uh, notice the it's set to 2000% for the speed. That's That was 20 times faster. Uh, and if I look at my film back here, it ends with him as a werewolf. Let me move this out of the way here. And the credits come in right here. So right when the credits come in, uh, I'm going to hit this and press M to add a marker. Right when the credits come in to the point where they end, right about here, I want the entire film to fast forward. And actually, using Command Plus to zoom in, that uh, works out to about about 20%, but we could just drag this to make it faster or small or slower, um, depending on how quickly we want that film to speed by. So I'm going to move that over. Here's the film. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit, and then I'm going to take the opacity down so that it fast forward through the credits. So now with that done, I'm going to hit the space bar to play this and preview this effect. And there, notice the entire film is going by fast forwarding through the whole thing just to see this uh, in action with the fast forward effect. So that's one way you can manipulate time using the speed effects that are included with Final Cut. In a similar way, if I go back here and just I'm gonna use the blade tool to cut out a, a small portion of this, I'm going to click on my clip here, go up to speed, slow 10%. Now I've slowed down this part to 10%. So that's how we can create a slow motion effect just by adjusting that speed there. The other part of uh, working with speed effects, when you have a uh, speed effect applied, you'll see the video quality down here at the bottom. And I want to just take a quick moment to mention that the video quality determines how all of those frames are mixed together. And you should try each of these to see which one works best for your type of speed change. If you're doing slow motion on a clip that was recorded at a very high frame rate, you're going to have different results than someone who recorded at the standard maybe 24 frames a second like this film was shot at. Um, if we're using flame bending versus optical flow, you're going to get different effects. So after you make a speed change, say I do the fast forwarding, speed change here. Go back to this menu, go down to video quality, and you can try frame blending and optical flow as different ways to apply the slow motion effect. After you've applied it, wait for the rendering to complete, and then watch the film and watch that effect to see if the quality is what you want it to be. What I will say is optical flow is Final Cut actually regenerating uh, frames and recreating frames that didn't exist. So you can get some pretty cool effects from that, but you can also get some uh, kind of unexpected results that actually make it look worse in some cases. But the rendering with optical flow, it can take a lot longer for that to complete. And it'll happen in the background because it actually goes through and analyzes that clip for optical flow. So just be aware that although it may make your slow motion look better, 
it may take a long time to render even if you're on a fast machine. So those are some of the speed effects and how you can manipulate speed uh, inside Final Cut using just one speed change to a clip. You can also use a tool called Blade Speed, which lets you manipulate the speed changes at different portions. So I'm gonna do Blade Speed there, I'm gonna go down and do Blade Speed here, and what you'll notice is now I have three segments for this speed, and I can adjust each of them individually. So maybe I want it to go really fast at one spot and then slow down for the end. So you're able to adjust each of these speed changes and it'll adjust accordingly as it's playing back through. So if you're trying to create some speed effects, that's how you can do it with Final Cut Pro 10.